In this tutorial, we are going to talk about linear momentum. So, what is linear momentum? So, let's say you have got an object. This object is moving in this direction. Remember, this object is going to have a mass. At the same time, this object, since it's moving, is going to have the velocity. Okay, so when something is moving and that object is having the mass and the velocity, then we have got what we call the momentum. So momentum can be defined as the product of mass and the velocity. Now, this momentum is represented by the symbol P. So momentum is a vector. It can be negative or positive. Okay. So, momentum is a vector, and remember we said that vector is a physical quantity which has got both magnitude and direction. Okay? So, momentum being a vector, we know that it can be negative or positive. That is just okay. So, we are saying that momentum is represented by, uh, by P. So, we are saying that this is mass times the velocity. So, this is the momentum. Okay? Now, let's talk more about momentum. We do know that mass is in kgs. Velocity is in meter per second. So we can see that this momentum, the SI unit, is just basically kg uh, me, uh, meter per second. That is very, very important. Okay. Now, let's talk more about this momentum. Okay. Now, when we talk about momentum in general, we are saying that if an object is moving, it has momentum which is mass times, let's say, the change in velocity. So this change in velocity, we might, we might say, is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. Okay? Then there is also what we call the impulse. So there is a relationship which is there between the impulse and momentum. Okay? So impulse is the same as mom uh, momentum. Now, let's talk more about the impulse first. Okay? So, we are saying that the impulse, this guy so-called impulse, represented by symbol I, is given by the first time, the change in time. So, momentum, you can say change in momentum is the mass time, the change in velocity. So, we are saying that impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So, impulse is the same as the momentum. Now, let's see. If this is the same as the momentum, we can see that we are saying that momentum is the first times um, the time. So, we can say that this is the first times the change in time. The momentum is mass times the change in velocity. Okay? I can find the force. I can divide both sides by the change in time, even here by change in time. And I'm going to find that the force, the average force, is going to be the mass times the change in velocity, everything divided by the change in time. Now, I want to show you how this formula is coming about. There we go. So now, in general, we are saying that this, the average force, is given by um, the mass time change in V, everything divided by change in time. But remember, what is on the top there, that is, that's basically the change in momentum, divided by change in time. We know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. Let's pick it up uh, from there. So, we know that acceleration is given by the V final minus the V initial, everything divided by time. So, let's say this is change in time. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to replace this with my acceleration there. So I'm going to have the force to be equal to mass, open brackets, the V final minus V initial, everything divided by change in T. Okay? Now, I can see that if I distribute M, this is going to be M V final minus M V initial, everything divided by what? Divided by... Um, change in T. But at the same time, the mass is the same, but the velocity is changing. So we have got the change in velocity, which is the same as, we can say that the force is given by the mass times the change in velocity, 
everything divided by change in time. But what is mass time change in velocity? That is the change in momentum. Everything divided by change in time. So this is how the formula for the average force comes about. Now, so force is in Newton. That is very, very important. Time is in um, seconds. So we can use dimension analysis to see, to prove that if you have got the average force is equal to the change in momentum divided by the change in um, time, it's going to give us see, newtons. Let's see. So if I have um, my formula, which is um, the average force to be equal to the momentum, and we know that the momentum is kg meter per second, and the time is just basically in seconds. Okay, so if time is in second, we can see that uh, the average force is going to be Newton. How? This is what we're going to have. Okay, so the force is mass times the acceleration. So the force is going to be mass is in kg. Acceleration is meter per second squared. Now this is what I want us to come up with here. So we can see that this is going to be m, then we are going to have this second and this second is going to be s squared. So we can see that kg meter per second squared is going to give us 1 newton, which is just the same as what we have there. Okay, so in general, what we are talking about here is that the momentum is just basically mass times change in velocity, then the impulse is the force times the change in time and we are saying that impulse is equal to the change in momentum okay so we can say that change in mom uh, in impulse is equal to change in momentum so the impulse is force times change in time this is going to give us mass times change in what in velocity now you can use this to find whatever you want to find if you want to find the force you have been given the mass with the velocity and the time you can find the what the momentum uh, the force as simple as that now I've got some a uh, few questions here. Let's see how we can solve them. So I've got the first question, which is saying, a, go, uh, a golf ball of mass 5.0 times 10 raised to the power negative 2 kg is struck with a club as uh, as shown in the figure below. Although we don't have any figure here, so we can just exclude this. Okay. Now. <clears throat> the next point is saying the force on the ball varies from zero when uh, when contact is made up to some maximum values. When the ball is maximum deformed and then back to zero. When the ball leaves the club as um, in the graph of force versus time. Okay. So you can also exclude this part here. We no longer need this. Assume that the ball leaves the club face with the velocity of 44. This one is supposed to be plus 44. So it's supposed to be plus 44 meters per second. But A, find the magnitude of the impulse due to the collision. But B, estimate the duration of the collision and the average uh, force acting on the ball. Okay, so the the last part is asking us to say use the momentum theorem to estimate the average force, which is the same as part D, part B. So this question is just we are just talking about the same thing. Okay. Now let's start with um, the first part. Now, the first part is asking us to find the magnitude of the impulse. Okay. Remember, impulse is a vector. It can be negative. Or positive. Now, let's come up with data first. We know the mass. The mass is 5.0 times 10 raised to the power negative 2 kgs. What else do we know? We know the velocity. So we can see that that is going to be the final velocity. The initial velocity is going to be 0. So the initial velocity is 0. The final velocity is going to be plus 44 meters per second. What else do we know? These are the only things we know. Okay. So the first question is saying, find the magnitude of the impulse. So impulse is given by 
um, the force times change in time but we don't have time remember we don't have the force at the same time change in momentum is given by the mass times change in velocity but remember we say that impulse is equal to change in momentum so I can use this information to find the impulse okay I can say that impulse is going to be the mass times the change in velocity the change in velocity we're going to have the final velocity and the initial velocity so I'm going to have the impulse to be equal to the mass v final minus v initial okay now let's plug in the values we see what we're going to have so we're going to have the impulse to be equal to the mass is 5.0 times 10 raised to the power 2 open brackets the final velocity is positive 44 minus 0 so let's see the impulse we're going to have so we expect our impulse to be positive okay so using my calculator I can see that 5.0 exponent neg 2 then times 44 I need I'm getting 2.2 .2. so 2.2 .2, remember this is uh, the mass this is the velocity so it's going to be kg per meter per second so this is my impulse at the same time this is my momentum momentum is the same as the impulse so here if they can ask us to find the momentum the momentum is the same as uh, positive 2.2 .2 kg meter per second as simple as that but B is saying estimate the duration of the collision and the average force acting on the ball remember I said part C and part B is the same because here they are talking about we estimate the average uh, force exerted during the impact which is the same as the average force in part B okay so now uh, we can see that uh, using the data which we have now we have the momentum we want to find the duration duration is just basically time they want us to estimate okay so we can see that uh, the change in time we, we if we we come to speed okay speed is given by the change the distance uh, okay the change in distance divided by the change in time so I want to find the time in this case I'm just estimating meaning let's estimate to say our distance is um, our change in distance let's say it is 3.0 times 10 raised to the power less to the power 2 meters we're just estimating you can use any distance we're just estimating so I want to find T I can say that my change in t will be equal to uh, the change in x divided by the speed the speed we have there which is 44 but the question is saying estimate the duration of the collision and the average force so the average meaning that speed which we have we need to do times 2 okay so meaning the speed which we're going to use now is going to be 22 so we're going to have 3.0 times 10 raised to the power negative 2 everything divided by the speed is going to be 22 because it's the average the the 44 we have divided by 2 that is what we're going to have using our calculator 3.0 exponent negative 2 divided by 22 so I'm getting my time I have to put this in scientific notation which is going to be 1 point so my change in t is going to be 1.36 times 10 raised to the power negative 4 seconds so this is going to be my duration now what of the force after ex uh, estimating the the, um, the time we can now estimate the what the average force remember we said impulse is equal to the change in momentum impulse is the force the force times change in momentum which is going to give us mass time the change in velocity now from here we can see that we're going to use the, the information which you have which is going to be I'm going to divide both sides by change in T even here by change in T so the force is going to be equal to the mass time change in velocity over the change in time okay so the force is going to be equal to what is the mass the mass which you have is 5 Point zero times 10 raised to the power negative 2 then the velocity now which we have is uh, positive 44 
So I'm going to divide this by the duration, so which is uh, 1.36 times 10 raised to the power negative, negative 4. Okay, that is our duration. So 1.36 times 10 raised to the power negative 4. Let's see what we're going to have. So we're going to have 5.0x uh, to the power 2 times 44, then divided by 1.36 exponent negative um, 1. So I'm getting my average force to be 16,000. So it's going to be positive. Okay. It's going to be positive because the velocity was positive. So it's going to be positive at 16,000. 100 and um, okay let's just put this in scientific notation to make things simple so I'm getting a uh, one point which is going to be positive positive 1.62 times 10 raised to the power 4 newtons so this is going to be my what my average force so in this case we are done with this question now remember part c is saying use the impulse uh, momentum theorem to estimate the average force so this is the same as what we have found here so the answer for part c and the answer for part b we have two for part b the the, the duration which is the time and the average force so the force which you have found there is the same as the force which we have found uh, on part c so now in general they just made a mistake putting uh, question uh, c here Okay, because it's already there in part B. Okay, so let's see if we can solve another question, which is saying, in a, uh, in a crash test, a car of mass 1.5 times 10 raised to the power 3 kgs collide with a wall and rebounds as shown in the figure below. The initial and the final velocity of the car are, the initial velocity is negative 15 meters per second and the final velocity is 2.0. 6 meters per second respectively if the collision lasts for 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.150 0 seconds find part a the impulse delivered to the car due to the collision and part b find the size and the uh, direction of the average force exerted on the car so now again we, s we can see that uh, before collision we had the velocity which was uh, our, the car which was moving due east uh, due west and we know that uh, Momentum, whenever we're talking about momentum and the impulse, we're talking about the vector. So the direction matters. Okay. So in this case, this car is moving toward a uh, negative x direction or toward west. Then we can see that the velocity is negative, as you can see from here. Then after, after hitting the wall, it started now coming um, toward positive x axis or toward east with the velocity of 2.6. Now, this velocity has to be positive because it's now moving toward the positive x axis. That is very, very important. Now, the question is find the impulse. Remember, impulse is equal to change in momentum. Okay? So, the change in momentum is the mass times the change in velocity. So, the impulse is going to be we have the mass, open brackets, this is going to be the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So impulse is going to be the mass is 1.50 times 10 raised to the power 3, open brackets. What is the final velocity? The final velocity is 2.60 minus the initial velocity is negative 15. So this one is supposed to be negative 15 and not negative 1.5 here. Supposed to be negative 15. It's 15.0. Okay. So negative 15. Point zero. That is what we have. So my impulse is going to be uh, 1.50 exponent um, times 10 to the power 3. Okay. Or we can find what is inside first, which is 2.60. Then negative negative is going to be plus 15, which is going to give me. Um, it's going to give me 17.6 so 17.6 times uh, the mass okay so I, I was thinking maybe this is the velocity but this mass is supposed to be the same the way it is okay the mass is just like that I, I, I was thinking maybe this is the velocity so that is just okay 
it's supposed to be 1.5 times 10 to the power 3 that is the mass but the velocity the initial velocity is 15, is negative 15 okay so it's 17.6 uh then times in 1.50 times 10 raised to the power 3 so i'm getting my impulse now since this is going to be positive okay because this velocity here inside here we're getting positive so it's going to be positive 26400 so we have kg meter per second that is going to be my impulse now the next question is saying uh find the size what is the size and the direction of the average force exerted so to find the average force let's not forget so we know that this is the same as we have found the momentum so the momentum which is the same as the impulse is positive 26400 so i'm going to get rid of this now we want to find the so we know that impulse is equal to change in momentum impulse is force times change in t which is going to be equal to the change in momentum momentum we have already let's divide both sides by change in t change in t the force is going to be equal to the change in momentum divided by the change in t so force will be equal to what is our momentum our momentum is 26400 we divide it by the time so the change in time is 0 0.15 seconds so this is kg a meter per squared or per second so let's see the average force which i'm going to have it has to be positive because the momentum is positive so the average force is going to be 26400 divided by 0 0.150 which is going to be positive uh, 176 positive 176 0, 0 newtons so i can put this in scientific notation and i can say that this is going to be my average force to be positive uh 1.76 times 10 raised to the power 5 newtons as simple as that okay so this is what you need to know and the impulse and the momentum now let us talk about um, elastic collision so what is it so elastic collision this is the type of collision where when two objects collide they are going to be moving a separate or we can say they're not going to stick together okay so let's say we have got um, uh, this is the load we have got two marbles they say have marble one and marble two so this one we're going to call it m1 this one is called m2 so marble one is moving with a velocity v1 which we can say initial so it's moving in that direction then the velocity for two initially is it uh, it is at rest so it's going to be zero okay in most cases the initial velocity is going to be zero but sometimes it can be moving and they can give you the velocity so this is before collision this is before collision now after collision this is what is going to happen after collision these two they are going to be moving um this one is going to be here another one is going to be here so we're going to have m1 then m2 so m1 is going to bump into m2 but they're not going to stick together so we're going to have the velocity one final and the velocity two final that is very very important now from here we can drive the equation okay so the equation here we're going to have the momentum before collision okay the momentum before is equal to the momentum after 
so the momentum before we have got two we have got the momentum for m1 and the momentum for m2 so we can say the momentum one plus momentum two which is initially so initially has to be equal to the momentum one which is final plus the momentum two final okay so we know that momentum represented by the symbol uh, by the letter p is mass times the velocity so meaning that this is going to be m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initially this has to be equal to m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final in some books they are going to show you that the final velocity is the same as v prime okay so when they're talking about v prime this is the same as the final velocity so in this case i'm going to be using v f the vf to be the final velocity so this is the formula for elastic collision okay so in general let's put it there we are saying that our formula has to be m1 times v1 which is going to be initially plus m2 times v2 okay which has to be initially has to be equal to we're going to have m um, m1 which is going to be times v1 which is going to be final plus um, m2 then you have v2 fine so this is our formula for elastic corrosion now under elastic corrosion there are two things which are going to to be there we are going to have one the momentum is conserved also kinetic energy is conserved so in both cases in both corrosion elastic and inelastic corrosion momentum is conserved now here uh, in elastic collision kinetic energy is conserved but in inelastic collision kinetic energy is not conserved but momentum is conserved that is also very very important now sometimes it is impossible for us to to find the final velocity using only this equation okay so there are two formulas which we have to understand at the same time we have to know under elastic collision so the first formula which you have to know is the the one which you have here now the second formula is going to be the combination of the first formula which you have plus the combination of what since we are saying that the kinetic energy is conserved so if the kinetic energy is conserved meaning that the initial kinetic energy is going to be equal to the final kinetic energy or we can say the kinetic energy before collision is going to be equal to the kinetic energy after collision okay so we know that if we say kinetic energy before collision has to be equal to the kinetic energy after collision so i know that here i have I have m1 and m2 meaning that i've got two kinetic energy i'm going to have the kinetic energy one which is going to be initially okay plus kinetic energy two initially has to be equal to kinetic energy one final plus kinetic energy um two final so we are saying that kinetic energy is conserved now let's see so here we know that kinetic energy is going to be half mv so we're going to have half, half then the m which is going to be m1 then v1 initial so it's going to be squared plus half m2 then we're going to have v2 initially squared it has to be equal to half m1 v v1 final let me just put it here v1 final squared plus half 
m2 v2 final squared so this is going to be our formula now now we can see that from here we can cancel the half we can see the half error we can we can do times 2 okay we do times 2 and we're going to see that if we do times 2 then we're going to have m1 v1 initial squared plus m2 v2 initial squared has to be equal to m1 v1 final squared plus uh, we are going to have m2 v2 final squared now let me get rid of this I no longer need this ok I no longer need this now from here I can do something else what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to isolate I'm going to bring m1 which is this part here I'm going to bring it to the left hand side then I'm going to push this to the right hand side so I'm going to have m1 v1 initial squared minus m1 v1 final squared so this is going to be equal to now here I've got m2 v2 final I'm shifting now this to the right hand side I want to have m2 and the m1 m1 should be uh, to the right hand left hand side m2 is going to be to the right hand side so it's going to be minus m2 v2 initial squared okay now from here i can now also get rid of this now now i have two equations okay let's just put our equation here so let me get rid of this Okay, so I'm going to put this one to be m1 v1 initial squared minus m1 v1 final squared has to be equal to m2 v2 final this is supposed to be squared so it is squared minus m2 v2 um, initial squared so let's call this one as equation 1 and this one as the equation 2 now we are going to use this formula which we are trying to derive here in a case where they ask you to find under elastic collision they ask you to find the final velocities they're not going to give you the velocity of m1 and the velocity of m2 the final velocity so you have to find the final velocity you can only find that uh, final velocity the two velocities using the first equation which we have just come up with for elastic collision and the equation which we are going to derive from here so this is what we're going to do okay now from here i can from this uh, from equation two i can isolate i can factor out m1 m1 is going to be open brackets v1 initial squared minus v1 final squared this is going to be equal to i can isolate m2 here i'm going to have v2 final squared minus v2 initial squared okay now from here what we're going to do is um um i'm going to divide equation i'm going to divide equation one by equation two but at the same time what we have to do is um, the first equation which we have we can also we have this equation the first equation which you have i'm going to shift the m1 to go to the other to the left hand side so i'm going to have um i'm going to have m1 v1 initial minus i'm shifting now this to the left hand side so i'm going to have minus m1 v1 final this is going to be equal to i have m2 v2 final which is this part here then i'm shifting now this to the right hand side so i'm going to have minus m2 uh, v2 initial at the same time i'm going to isolate m1 m1 is going to be v1 initial minus uh, v v1 final has to be equal to i'm going to isolate m2 so v2 final minus uh, v2 initial 
so now I have got these equations I have got this equation here which is very very important also this equation remember this was our equation 1 this was our equation 2 so this is now our equation 3 this is now our equation 4 so what we have to do is we have to divide equation uh, 3 uh, by equation 4 so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to create space here I'm going to get rid of this okay so I have to divide this by the equation which I have so this is what I'm going to do so this equation 3 we divide with what equation equation 2 equation 4 so my equation 4 I'm going just to divide here I'm going to say this divided by I have um, m1 open brackets v1 initial minus v1 final this has to be equal to m2 v2 final I'm just copying this v2 minus v2 initial now let's get rid of this now from here we can see that we can cancel the m we have got the same m so I'm going to cancel this I'll also cancel this so what I'm going to have now is um, I'm going to have um, v1 okay v1 squared which is initial minus v1 final squared this has to be equal to v2 final squared minus v2 initial squared so these are going to be in brackets I'm going to divide everything by what I'll divide here by v1 initial minus v1 final I'll put them in brackets this has to be equal to v2 final minus v2 initial so I'll do this now I can see that what I have on top there is a di is a, uh, it's a different of two squares so if it is a different of two squares if I have if I have x let's say we have x squared minus y squared this is the same as x minus x minus y then squared so this is a different of two squares where we are going to say it's going to be x minus y then x plus y so which is the same as what we have here so what I have on top there I'm going to have v1 initial minus v2 uh, final oh, which is v1 sorry this is supposed to be v1 final then I'm going to have also v1 um, initial now it's going to be plus because the different of two squares I'm going to have this um, v1 final again what I have here is going to be the same as what I have to I'm going to have v2 final minus v2 initial again I'm going to have v2 final plus v2 initial so everything here has to be divided by uh, v1 initial minus v1 final okay then this has to be equal to v2 final minus v2 initial now we can see that these two guys can be cancelled this and this can go here these two can go so we're going to remain with our formula which is going to be we're going to remain with our formula which is going to be v1 initial plus v1 final is equal to v2 final plus v2 initial so now from here we have to put the initial we have to to put the initial alone and the final alone so I'm going to say v5 v1 initial I'm going to shift now this to the left hand side so it's going to be minus v2 initial it's going to be equal to v2 final minus I'm shifting now this to the right hand side minus him v1 final so this is the formula which you have to know again but you should also know how to drive it so under elastic collision or under elastic collision you have to know two formulas this is very very important the first one 
is the one which I gave you to say we're going to have m1 okay we have m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial has to be equal to uh, m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final so these two are very 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 important so this is the first equation which you have to know this is the second equation which you have to know and the elastic collision but you should also know how to drive the second equation so this equation you only apply this equation after using you're going to to see this, some questions where they're going to ask you to find the final velocities now to find the final velocities you have to use first the this equation another one then you have to apply this one because you're going to have two unknown variables so if you have got two unknown variables these are the formulas which you have to use okay so this is very very important which you have to know now let's review we are saying that yeah, elastic collision this is the type of collision where after collision two objects are going to move uh, to moving what right? they are going to move separate okay and we said the uh, momentum and kinetic energy is conserved what it means there is that the initial momentum is going to be equal to the kinetic um, momentum at the same time the initial kinetic energy is going to be equal to the final kinetic energy so you can prove this by using the numbers if maybe you see any question find the kinetic energy the initial and the final velocity, uh, kinetic energy you're going to discover that it's going to be the same okay so now let's say we have um, a question which is saying um, high speed troposcopic uh, photograph show that the head of a 200 grams golf, golf club is traveling at 55 meters per second just before it strike a 46 gram golf ball at rest on a, uh, on a tee after the collision the club head travels in the same direction at 40 meters per second find the speed of the golf ball just after the impact now before you solve any question for momentum it is very very important for us to understand the question once you understand the question here they are saying that after collision they started moving in the same direction okay meaning all the velocity you are going to have here is going to be positive okay so now if we can check here so um they are moving in the same direction but in a case where after collision they move in opposite direction then another one you have to get it as negative another one you have to get it as a positive so the one which is going to have positive is the one going toward east the one having negative is the one which is going toward the west okay so now from here we can see that this question is just dialect let's come up with data first okay they want us to find we have the mass now that mass let's call it m1 so our m1 we're going to say is 200 grams which for the golf and we also have m2 for the for the golf ball which is 46 grams what of the velocity one initially the velocity one is 55 meters per second then the velocity two initially they're saying that it was at rest so it's going to be zero meters per second okay now the velocity one final they are saying that we have to find find the speed of the golf ball so the golf ball is a v2 it's going to be v2 so this one is now 40 meters per second v2 final is the one we're trying to find now from here we know that we only we are only one variable which we don't know in this case so if we don't know only one variable you can only use one formula which is m1 v1 initially plus m2 v2 initially has to be equal to m1 v v1 final plus m2 v2 final now let's plug in the values so this will, uh, initially it was at rest so this is going to be zero so m1 we have to convert this is going to be 0 0.02 is uh, 200 divided by a thousand so it's going to be 200 divided by a thousand it's going to be 0. Point, it's, um, 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 
then the velocity initially it was 55 plus this is going to be 0 so m1 m1 now is a 0 0.2 times the final velocity of this is 40 okay then plus the this mass is 46 so 46 divided by 1000 46 divided by 1000 so it's giving me 0 0.046 so 0 0.046 times v2 fine remember we're trying to find the v2 fine so 0 0.2 times 55 i'm getting 11 this has to be equal to 40 times 0 0.2 so 4 times 0 0.2 i'm getting 8 plus 0 0.046 v final so which is v2 final you see specify it so this one has to come there 8 11 minus 8 0 0.046 v2 this now what we have to understand is that in most case in most cases you're going to discover to say the velocity of the ball which was initially at rest after collision is going to be greater than the velocity of the ball which made it to start moving okay so in short the energy which m1 was carrying is going to be transferred to what to m2 in short it's the one which is going to make uh, to make m2 to start moving okay so we have 11 minus 8 which is going to be 3 so i have 3 is equal to 0 0.046 v to find let's divide both sides by 0 0.046 even here 0 0.046 so our v2 final is going to be 0 0.046 so this is giving me 65.2 65 65.21 or two let's let's just say two two we round it off meters per second so this is going to be the velocity of um, the golf ball just after the collision so for this question this is our answer okay now what if you have been given a question where you have two missing variables how can you find the velocity now here's a question for you so this question is saying um, two brilliant ball of identical masses move uh, toward each other with positive x axis to the light step one and step two assume that the collision between them is perfectly elastic meaning after collision they are going to move separately if the initial velocities of the ball the balls are 30 a uh, positive 30 meters per second and negative 20 meters per second respectively what are the velocities of the ball after the collision I assume friction and rotation are unimportant so now let's come up with data okay so we come up with data we can see that Now let us talk about inelastic collision. So what is inelastic collision? Basically in this tutorial we are going to talk about the recoil velocity. So what is the recoil velocity? Let's start with this question which is saying an anchor stands at rest on a frictionless ice his total mass uh, including his bow and the quiver of arrows is 60.00 kg as shown in the figure below if the anchor fires a 0 0.0300 kg arrow horizontally at 5 at 50 meters per second in positive x axis or positive x direction what is his subsequent velocity across the eye so they're asking about what is the recoil velocity 
okay so now remember what we have to remember here is that now let us talk about garancing collision so garancing collision basically this is just a collision which um which happens in two dimension so after two object collide they are going to be moving separately but in they are going to be moving um in opposite direction not necessarily in opposite direction but they are going to be moving at an angle okay so here is the situation so um, initially this is type uh, this type of um collision we can say it is elastic collision where kinetic energy is conserved and the momentum is conserved okay so let's let's have an object let's call this one to be our m1 okay so initially this is going to be moving moving in this direction so as it is moving in this line at this point here we are going to have m2 okay which is initially at rest where the initial velocity is going to be zero now after m1 bumps into m2 this is what is going to happen so we have a straight line so this is what is going to happen we're going to have our m2 bouncing in this direction and m1 bouncing in this direction so we're going to have um, these two guys here we're going to have m1 here on top m2 down here so we're going to have the so i have the first question she's saying two shuffleboard disc of e-commerce one orange and the other green are involved in a perfect elastic uh, balancing collision the green disc is initial at rest and is struck by the orange disc moving initially to the light at t5 meters per second as shown in the figure below after the collision the orange disc move in a direction that makes an angle of the 7 degrees with the horizontal axis while the green disc makes an angle of 53 degrees with uh, this axis as shown in the figure below again determine the speed of each disc after the collision now after In this tutorial, we are going to talk about ballistic pendulum. Okay, so there are two scenarios which you need to be familiar with under ballistic pendulum. So, ballistic pendulum it can undergo either uh, in uh, elastic collision or in elastic collision. The bullet goes through the block in a very short time, and the center of gravity of the block is found to uh, to raise at a vertical distance.